What it do y'all, it's your girl Makeup and Drama. And for today's video, I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I have a snow day tomorrow and I wanted to record another video. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about three authors from three different genres in literature um, that I highly recommend. These are all going to be recommended recommendations for black authors. Um, as I've been saying, I've been trying every Wednesday and Friday to be uploading videos surrounding blackness. Um, and as you guys know, I also do have a second channel where I do talk about my re love of reading um, and I do read a lot. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about three different categories that are like the main genres that I read um, and yeah let's get into it. So I read a lot of romance. I read quite a bit of fantasy and sci-fi and then I also do read I feel like for my age bracket and just me in general I read quite a bit I'm really close up I apologize for that I also read I also read quite a bit of nonfiction so these are gonna be the categories that I really focus in on and I have one like read everything from her um, but you know I, I you know there are certain authors where like just blanket statement read everything and she is one of them a lot of these authors I've read almost all of their stuff but we're gonna leave that in the past so let's start off with romance because I actually have physical books for all the authors that I want to talk about so let me scoot over a little bit Talia Hibbert I believe this was my very first book that I read from Talia Hibbert actually which is Get a Life Chloe Brown this is um following Chloe Brown. She has fibromyalgia um, and this is a plus size woman and she had a near-death experience and after that she decided that she was going to get a life so she wrote a list and in that list she had I believe about 10 different things that she planned to do to get herself a life and we're just following her and her shenanigans of trying to complete that list and in walks in her what do they call it the person like and superintendent no that's schools the guy that like the person that like lives in your apartment building you're super so in walks in her super red um and red is a tall drink of water okay and he also has the easy accessibility to help her take off one of the items on her list of course multiple more but we're, we're gonna leave those for the people who actually take the time to read this book i really enjoyed this book um yeah highly recommend all of these books i gave five stars maybe one or two I gave four so keep that in mind but anyways I've read this I've read so to date right now two of the three books have actually come into my possession the second book is somewhere in my room I don't actually know where it is but it's somewhere um the third book is actually on its way to me cannot wait cannot wait okay um and yeah I highly recommend Talia Hibber I have read three or four different series from her and I've enjoyed all of the series. Um, this is quite a fluffy contemporary so if you that's where you want to like stop I've read that and she also gets a little she gets a little nasty and I've read a couple of those too so overall I enjoy Tolly Hibbard I would highly recommend them um, and yeah so next uh, next author I wanted to talk about is Jasmine Gilroy. I really really have been enjoying her work like a lot so these are two out of this series I don't actually know the name of the series if we're being honest um and I know I've read more than just these two but it's expensive to buy books so I buy them when they're on sale or when I'm feeling froggy and right now I only felt froggy to buy these two um basically each time you follow of course a couple um and their romance so in the wedding date you follow these two main characters they actually meet in an elevator and she saves him from going to his ex's wedding 
solo. So she decides, you know what, hey, I'll be your date. Um, and she of course has to pretend to be his plus one and his girlfriend. And what happens when people pretend to date? they really end up dating. So this was really good. I also really liked that you brought some diversity in the inter-ethnicity um, relationship. I love reading about that. Um, and yeah, it was good. Okay, and then the proposal. <laughs> so in this book, Sis gets proposed to by her boyfriend. Um, and there were a couple of problems with that, okay? First of all, they had only been dating for like a month. Second of all, bruh, spelled her name wrong on the jumbotron and third of all she flat out has told him that she refused to get engaged in person or in like public so he got made a fool out of and people tried to clown her and in walks in prince charming and he saves her and she saves him afterwards. Um, but either way, I really like Jasmine Gilleroy's writing. Um, I think that she does a really good job. And yeah, I've really enjoyed the books that I've read from her. I really should see if I need to read any more books from her. But anyways, I'm, I, I slept. I've only read Contemporary Romance by Jasmine Gilleroy. I don't know if she does any other genre within romance but i have read her contemporary romance series specifically this one series okay and then the last author that i want to talk about in the romance genre i have read two out of i believe five or six books within this particular series and the series is called reluctant royals i actually don't have the copies of this book series i don't know what the girl thought earlier um but this is a series i've read the first two books and these are another kind of contemporary romance series so in this series each woman um to date has fallen in love with some type of royalty um whether they are a prince or you know a duke or otherwise um and it's been cute it's been nice and fluffy i will say personally i really enjoyed the second one a lot more than the first not saying that the first one was terrible i just it just didn't hit all those buttons for me but the second one was scrumptious so um yeah those are the romance uh recommendations that i would give you and some authors that i would recommend in case you are interested um there are plenty others okay rebecca weatherspoon saucy okay sis does some saucy stuff okay if you have amazon what is it unlimited i don't have that i that's a whole nother tangent for a whole nother day but let me tell you sis rebecca weatherspoon is saucy and she is an amazing writer and she does she i believe she's like an independently published author so if you want something that's more independent or indie I would highly recommend her. She's really, really good. But otherwise, of course, the three authors that I've already given you, good. Okay, so now let's move into some sci-fi. Now I said I do, and I, I said, and I do read a lot of fantasy as well, but I find that I haven't personally found some fantasy authors that I are black, of course, that I'm in love with. So I'm gonna stick with the sci-fi element I'm going to stick with the sci-fi element of the Santa I'm going to stick with the sci-fi element of sci-fi fantasy genre and we're going to talk about three different authors the first one I'm going to talk about I actually don't have any physical books which I honestly I don't what how I don't know anyways the first book we're going to talk about is by or the first author we're going to talk about is Octavia Butler I've read quite a few of her work um and it's fantastic fantastic the one that like i feel if you need just like give me something that she is raved about um i not only trying to find the name of the book because i forgot okay not only did i read the actual novel i also read or and yeah i read the graphic novel um adaptation and this is of course going to be kindred i loved kindred loved it so so much so in this book we follow i don't remember her name but we follow this young lady she is 
kind of lost in the sauce, right? She doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life. She thinks she wants to be a writer, but she's, it's not working for her. And she's working this like really small minimum wage job where she's a temp. And at the current job she's been at for quite some time, she finds a gentleman um, of a certain age, if you will. Um, and they take an interest with each other and they fall in love and they get married. This gentleman is, of course, not her um, ethnicity, so there is some inter-ethnic inter relationship representation in case that is something that you're very interested in. Um, and you continue on further to the fact that our main character, she randomly gets sucked into antebellum slavery um and er she gets sucked into antebellum slavery and every time she just so happens to be around one individual and the whole book you're kind of trying to understand with her what is going on why this is happening and maybe how it can change it's fantastic i i loved the complexities of this book um like i said she in her real life she's married to somebody who at that time period and now it's not unseemly for her to be married to him but in antebellum time it is and so it's, it's just very very interesting i oh my gosh i highly recommend that book um and i highly recommend her as an author she has written so many books um and i've only skimmed the surface as of her writings and i cannot wait to read more from her and i need to find out why i don't have that book if we're being frank okay so the next author i want to talk about i have um a bunch of her stuff let me see if i still have the library book of the last author really quickly i'm glad i looked okay so the next author that i want to talk about is i fell in love with her writing i fell in love with her stories and i have these and i have some others that i haven't read and i'm in the middle of reading so just be prepared it is four books <laughs> that I've already read, binged them, binged them. And we're talking about Nnedi Okorafor. She is a sci-fi author and she really does a lot of her work um, focuses around the continent of Africa. A lot of her worlds, you really can see um, correlations between the continent. Uh, and depending on the book, you really get specific countries as well. So these are both two different series. So let's talk about Binti real quick, which I should have the third one. So I need to figure out if I have the third one. If I don't, I need to get it. So in this world, Binti, she um, and her family, they are very technologically uh, advanced and they tend to stay with themselves. They don't leave their land um, and they don't leave their tribe. But Binti gets offered a scholarship in which she can go to a very prestigious university in another planet, aka Earth, kind of. It's, it's a wee bit confusing, but it's still very vivid and very interesting. Um, and she goes, she has to deal with that decision. She has to deal with the decision of whether she is going to stick with her family and stick with her tribe and her land or if she is going to travel elseworld elseworld elsewhere and the three books you really just follow binti and her adventure i want more i would love i should see if there's fan fiction because of the ending either way i just i want more from this world i want more from binti i want to see like binti 10 years from at the end of this these series like i just i want more i do <laughs> and these books are so small but they pack a punch i mean a punch you don't feel like there's extra words because there aren't uh and Nettie really just takes and gives you what you need she gives you no fluff no extra in this series i really really highly recommend this series then the other series that I finished from her today is the Kata 
the Kata Witch um, series. So Kata Witch is first, Kata Warrior is second. And in this world, being an albino is thought to be very, very um, scary. You shouldn't it, you shouldn't be able to live and in a lot of African cultures that is still something I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a thing now but it definitely has been something in the past where culturally they were very afraid of people who were albino who had al albanese who were albinos I'm sorry I don't know the plural um terminology of that but in this world Sunny because she is albino she has special powers and she doesn't realize that she has these powers until she gets enveloped in this world into this adventure and whoa baby sauce okay sis is a gangster she is a warrior and she is there not to play okay I loved it. There's a little romance that kindles in here. Same with this one. And it's enough for the fantasy and sci-fi that it doesn't overtake it. The, the fantasy and the sci-fi is definitely the main genre of these two series, but there is nice amounts of romance. I haven't been saying all of the uh, the romance that I discussed earlier were all like, if you, if you know kind of the demographic or the uh, genre, groupings for libraries all of those are going to be for adult recommending um binti this series is an adult um series and then these two are ya or teen series that in mind i mean it's all good you know um the last book and author that i want to talk about I actually still have my library a copy so i want to go ahead and show you guys and this is the weight of the the Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum. Okay, I'm going to put this out there. This is a sci-fi space queer beautifulnessnessness. Okay. Um, in this book, we follow two girls. Um, they're both teens, both in high school, and they both have very, very strong feelings and ties to space. So I don't remember names, so let's go and get the names. Okay, Ryan. Ryan has ties to space because her mom worked for NASA before her and her dad unfortunately were killed. Um, and so since then she has kind of pushed away her feelings for space because she has had to become the legal guardian for her younger brother and subsequently his child. Then we have Alexandra. And Alexandra is a very unique child in the sense that her mother got picked to basically live her life in space in a spaceship and travel as far as they could um, to just explore and to uncover more of space. Um, and because she sacrificed her life like that, Alexandra never met her. Literally her mom flew into space months after Alexandra was born. Um, and because of that, Alexandra has always had very strong feelings towards space because she's always wanted to know more. She's always wanted to be more connected to her mom and just be there. She's always wanted that. These two young women connect because they end up going to the same school and things happen. They get put into a situation where they're forced to become friends and things occur like i said this is a queer um novel so if that is not something that you're into if that's something that you are into it is a female female romance embedded into this sci-fi book but just like these two um series that i discussed the majority of this book is really about the sci-fi fantasy kind of element um to it but with the periphery of um the the two women just being queer um i will say this is going to be a lighter of sci-fi element and it's mainly sci-fi in the sense of one it's taking place in a in a future time period and then also it's just very heavily in do, involving um space otherwise you're not going to get like 
a different world where different things happen. There are no powers or anything like that where it's just space in this one. So a little bit of diversity in that grouping. Okay, last grouping for you guys is non fiction. Like I said, I do feel like I read quite a bit of nonfiction. Um, I try and get a decent amount throughout the year. I mean, I'm not reading like every book nonfiction. That's just not how your girl rolls. But I do try and read a quite a bit of nonfiction. Um, and over the years, these are some of my favorites by black authors. One I actually read, actually two of these I've read because of degree programs. So let's go ahead and start off with the one that I read first. I actually read this in undergrad and this is Dreams from My Father. This is one of Barack Obama's many, many biographies. This is a biography that he published way before he was president. Um, and it's just really, really good. Um, I, I think that it's so interesting to read a biography of somebody who has accomplished so much, um, regardless of your political views, regardless of how you feel about the actual individual. Barack Obama accomplished so much from a childhood that necessarily he didn't have to accomplish so much and a childhood that he necessarily didn't get this is the road to this if that makes any sense so i really 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 enjoyed this book i actually need to do a reread of it um because it's starting to become a vaguely familiar at this point um but yeah this is a book that i will never let go and i'm really happy that my undergrad degree program actually forced me to read this book a degree or a book that i read for my master's degree was phd to phd um this is following elaine richardson and once again this is actually another biography type book and we're following her going from being drug addicted sex worker to being a phd candidate and ultimately gaining her phd and once again it's just so fascinating to read other people's lives and understand or not even necessarily understand but get more of a perspective i always love reading regardless of what the genre is i love reading and kind of trying to correlate myself into the actual character of course but also saying how can this better me how can i understand what i'm doing right or what i'm doing wrong and this book it just helps me to stay positive um as you guys know i am not necessarily in the job that i would love to be in um and things have not been easy to get into the job that i want to be in but reading books like this and remembering what i read in these books really reminds me that you know it's not over until the fat lady sings and i still have plenty of time to do what i want to do in life and hopefully the more diligent the more consistent the more hard working i am i will get to those points so i highly recommend this as well i doubt you will have heard this about this book this is not one of those books that like highly well known everything else i feel like if you're in the book world you would have known about them but this is just a really really good book that i would personally highly recommend um to you guys and like like i said i mean sis went through it okay she went through it but she came out and she she won you know she's she's winning and then the last book <laughs> is a book for the first time i read it last year um and i read it because when my dad read it he was raving about it and we tend to talk about books a lot and I had to read it after he was talking about it because I'm like, this guy did what? He did what? <laughs> so this is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. If you don't know who David Goggins is, type his name into Le Google or into Le YouTube and I promise you either find a YouTube video from him or you will find him talking to somebody about him. This, once again, really is a book that really forces me to remember it's not over until the fat lady sings. David Goggins, let me let me back up, okay? He is a retired Navy SEAL. 
But before that, he was an uneducated, illiterate black man. He had to teach himself how to read, how to swim. He had to lose massive weight. He had to force himself to dedicate himself to himself. He had to decide to no longer just pity himself. He had to decide, I'm going to prove that I can be more. I can do what I want to do. And he did. This man has done so much. Um, I don't know if you guys have been with me for very long, but if you saw my, I did a get ready with me, I wanna say in last summer, where I talked about a workout challenge. It's this guy, he does a lot of workout challenges, he does a lot of mental toughness, and that's his big thing. If you are mentally tough, you can get through anything. And I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. I wholeheartedly agree with pretty much everything that he said. Now, some of the things that he has done, I know my limits, okay? I know them, I'm not gonna play myself. But at the same time, I do want to continue to push myself both mentally and physically. And having read something from a David Goggins, it really helps me to do that. It really, really does. Um, and yeah, so these are all books from black authors in these three categories that I would wholeheartedly recommend. One author just kind of in case you made it to the end and you're very big. I'm sure you know about this author. I'm sure you've read this book. The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I'm pretty sure I actually talked about this book in my only other book video on this channel. Um, one, I love Toni Morrison. Um, I need to actually get more of her actual books. Um, but I am one of those people, if you're a book collector, you know that I need to collect things in the same editions and I haven't seen her books in this edition so I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life but I read this in high school and it changed my perspective um, and it really helped me personally and I can't wait to read more from Tony Boyce and I really really can't but there are so many other phenomenal amazing outstanding black authors um non-fiction alone i talked about barack obama i didn't talk about michelle obama mainly because i haven't actually read the book i have it just haven't gotten to it yet but there are so many so many more authors that i have you guys don't even know um i read a lot i actually do last year i read 332 books i believe um and my goal this year is just 300 you know i'm taking it down a notch Scotty um so I read a lot and I hope to read so much more from all these authors and of course even more but for those who don't necessarily read a lot or have been slowly trying to get into reading especially because of this pandemic or anything like that these are some authors and some books that I personally would recommend if you have any questions on any of these books in particular or any authors or anything book related feel free to comment down here on this video or if you want to actually comment on my other channel you can do that as well i'll try and remember to link my other channel down below for you guys um but no pressure like i swear you can comment on this video and i'll still reply it takes me some time to reply sometimes but i'm trying to keep up a schedule when it comes to replying to comments it's just sometimes i get swamped reading a really good book um but that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys. I believe I have extra videos this week. So I believe I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow, um, Saturday with another video. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always y'all, black lives do matter. Please remember to wear a mask and stay safe. And I hope your foundation matches your neck. <laughs> Bye guys.